So we'll start off with the periodic table. So periodic table is the second chapter in chemistry. So first and foremost, uh, what are the things that we got we have to study in periodic table? And the first and foremost, what is the periodic table? What exactly is a periodic table? What is the importance? Why are we classifying all the all the elements into a periodic table? What is the advantage of it? And what were the attempts to classify different kind of uh, uh, different uh, uh, you know in order to uh, group all these uh, elements? Okay, what were the attempts? It was done by Dobrynin. It was done by Newland. It was uh, uh, done by uh, you know. Uh, Mendeleev and a lot of other people as well. Mostly, a lot of other people had uh, made different kind of attempts in order to classify the uh, elements which are known into different kind of groups. So, what were they? How did they attempt to do so? What were the merits? What were the demerits? Okay. And after that, we have got to study the modern periodic table, which we are using right now, which was actually designed by mostly Kevin Mead on Chedirgunana. I find it very difficult. All right. Up and now coming again. So we are we have got to study modern periodic table as well. And after that, we have got to study the trends in the periodic table. So how how the atomic size is going to vary down the periodic table across the period and how uh, chemical reactivity is affected, how valency is affected, how valence electrons are affected, and all those things we have got to study. This is a summary of the periodic table and important. Okay. Now, what is meant by a periodic table? What is meant by a periodic table is that the, the periodic arrangement of all the elements, all the elements, uh, the systematic arrangement of all the elements in a tabular form. Tabular form means it is in the form of a table, right? It is in the form of a table. So, in a tabular form. And displaying the elements. So uh, one one more speciality is that the elements having same same property are arranged in a group. The elements having same property are arranged in a group. Okay. So the systematic arrangement of the elements in a tabular in such a way that elements having similar property get arranged in the same column or same group. This is known as periodic table. Now, why is it important to classify the elements into a periodic table? See, there are 115 elements which are known, right? So it is going to be very difficult to study each and every element separate because it is going to take a lot of time. So what do we do? We group them together. People with similar property go into one group and we study about the group so that we can generalize the characteristic of a lot of elements together. This actually saves a lot of time. So 115 elements are known and it is very difficult to study the properties individually. So what do we do? So we go ahead and group them together and the groups are studied together. That is what we do. All right. So there are multiple groups which are there. See, this is one particular group. Okay. Ali, you guys are able to hear me? Yeah. So this is one group, this is the second group, this is the third group, this is the fourth group. There are 18 groups. This is a periodic table which we are using currently. This is a modern periodic table. Modern periodic table. So first group is the alkali group. Second, alkali, alkali metals. We call them alkali metals. Second group is the alkaline earth metal. We are going to see this in detail in a few minutes. Okay. Then now we are going to see the at Attempts of classification. Who all have attempted to classify different elements? Okay. From the beginning itself, there have been multiple attempts to actually classify the elements. Okay. In the first attempt have been to classify them into metals and non-metals. This was ruled out because, because it was not just metals and non-metals which are present. Or moreover, see, there are some things which show the properties of both metal and non-metal. Both non-metal and metal properties are exhibited by some elements. They could not be, they could not be fit into any place. So one of the drawbacks of this method is that, and moreover, not all metals are same, not all metals behave similarly, all metals are same, right? So not all metals are same, not all non-metals are same. So this was ruled out as soon as it got uh, uh, proposed. All right. So this was ruled out. Now, what about Dauberimer's triad? 
the Dauberiner's triad, new lands uh, way of classification, Mendeleev's way of classification, modern periodic table, were other attempts of classifying the elements which were known. We are going to see merits and demerits of each of these things. All right. The first one being the Dauberiner's triad. Now, what did this guy do? Dauberiner's triad. That means he arranged the known elements in groups of three. Okay, in groups of three. See, you have to understand one thing, all right? In Dauberiner's triad, Newland's law of Newland's way of classification and Mendeleev's table. The classification is based on atomic mass. The classification is based on atomic mass. In modern periodic table alone, the classification, the grouping or the arrangement, sorry, the classification, the arrangement, arrangement is based on atomic mass, all right? So, arrangement is based on atomic mass. In modern periodic table alone, the arrangement is based on atomic number. It is based on the atomic number, all right? This is very, very important. So, what did this guy Dauberiner do? Dauberiner arranged the, arranged the elements in the order of atomic mass. Then, what did he find out? When the elements were arranged in increasing order of their atomic mass, he, uh, he found that there were groups of three. See, there were groups of three. Groups of three. What is the speciality of this group of three? They have similar properties. They have similar properties. Moreover, the atomic mass of the middle one, the atomic mass of the middle one is the average, is equal to the average of the atomic masses of the other two. So, if when, when the, when the uh, elements were arranged in the increasing order of atomic mass, okay, in the increasing order of atomic mass, he found that he could identify groups of three. Now, what is the speciality of the groups of three? He found out that they had similar property. Moreover, the middle one, atomic mass of middle element, middle element, element in the middle, okay, is going to be the average of atomic mass of other two. Average of other two elements, atomic mass, all right? So, this is the speciality of the group of three. So, he called, since it was three, 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 he called them triads. He called them triads. All right. So, this was one of the solid atoms of classification. Okay. So, now what happened? There were limitations. What were the limitations? See, you have to study this. Okay. At least one example you have to study so that you can quote this example if some kind of question is asked based on this. Now, what is the limitation? Uh, with all the, even when quite a few elements were known during the time, uh, during Dauberina's period, Dauberina's time, he was able to find out only three triads, only three triads. Dauberina could attempt and find out only three triads, okay? Even when there were other similar property, uh, elements with similar property, okay? This was a limitation. So, this particular triad concept was not applicable to all the elements which were known during that time. See, that is a major limitation, right? So, whatever is applicable, whatever he has found out should have been applicable for the whole thing. Then only we can say that his, uh, his attempt of classification was 100% fulfilled. Now, he was not able to find out other triads other than these three triads. So, that is one of the major limitations of Dauberiner. We are done with Dauberiner. Now, Newland came. What did Newland say again? He, he has arranged the at atoms or elements based on the increasing, uh, increasing order of their atomic masses. Okay. Then, what did he find out? When the elements are arranged in increasing order of atomic mass, he found out that the physical and chemical properties are repeating. When are they repeating? Saregama Padanisa. In the eighth note, every eighth element is, ha is having the same property as the first element. Every ninth element is having the same property, physical and chemical property as the second element. Every tenth element is having the same chemical and physical property as the third element. In every eighth elemental position, there is a repetition of physical and chemical property. So, this is known as Newland's law of optics. 
So according to this Newland's law of octave, this is a very important question. According to Newland's law of octave, what did he say? He said that when the elements are placed in order of increasing atomic mass, the physical and chemical property are going to repeat. When is it going to repeat? In every eight element. In every eight element, there is going to be a repetition of property of the first element. After first element, the same property is going to be exhibited by the eighth element. After second element, it is going to be exhibited by the, uh, you know, the ninth element. Okay. So the lithium is going to be exhibiting the same property as that of sodium. So after sodium, the eighth element is going to be the potassium. It is going to have same property. After magnesium, the same property is going to be exhibited by the calcium because it has a difference of eight in between them. There are eight elements in between them. Now, this was very nice as long as he found out that there were quite a few issues, ladies and gentlemen, there were quite a few issues in this particular classification. The advantage was that, see, this particular law, law of octave, showed that there was some relation between atomic mass and repetition of property of the element. See, some or the other relation is there between the atomic mass and repetition of property of the element okay so that is one of the advantage but then there were quite a few limitations what were the limitation first limitation was that the law of octave was applicable only till calcium only till calcium after that the law of octave was not for being followed by the element Okay, so the law of octave was applicable only to calcium. Okay, that is not right. That is not good as far as classification is concerned. If there is a rule, it should be applicable for everybody. You cannot say that he has money. He is after calcium, so I will not obey the law of octave. We can't say that, right? So this is one of the major drawbacks. And moreover, he did a very bad thing. What was that? He, he has put in cobalt and nickel together. One slot was given to two people, which is very, in, very big injustice, okay? There was reservation for these two people. In one particular city, they had to share, okay? That was very, very bad. Newland adjusted two elements in the same slot, which is cobalt and nickel. And the worst thing is that they had entirely different property. They had entirely different property, okay? And moreover, cobalt and nickel was actually cobalt and nickel was put with fluorine chlorine bromine which had nothing to do with cobalt and nickel they were kept in a group with an entirely different property which is fluorine chlorine bromine iodine okay so the cobalt and nickel they were put together so a severe injustice had happened to cobalt and nickel first thing is that they had to share a thing second thing is that they had been put into a group which behaved entirely different from them who fluorine, chlorine, bromine had nothing to do with what cobalt and nickel was behaving. Another thing is that cobalt and nickel's family was here, over here. It showed a lot of similarity to iron. They were separated from this group. So iron, nickel and cobalt had similar property, but they were placed away. So uh, what did Newland do? Newland actually uh, had done a lot of injustice to these two people, which is cobalt and nickel. So now another thing is that Yulan was very short-minded. Please don't quote me anywhere. Just, uh, just to memorize, I'm telling all these things. Uh, during during Yulan's time, only 56 elements were there in nature. Only 56 elements were discovered by human beings. Okay. He thought that no more elements were going to be discovered in future. He told that no more elements are going to be discovered in future. So later when he, these new elements were uh, discovered, they were not able to fit the, these elements into Newland's octave, Newland's uh, periodic table, okay? They found it very difficult in order to fit uh, uh, the new elements into Newland's, uh, Newland's periodic table. So that is also another limitation of Newland's periodic classification. All right, now coming to the next one. Are you guys clear with this? Yes? Yes, sir. 
Okay, now coming to the next one. The third person, who is that? Mendel Leaf's periodic table. See, the extensive work on periodic table is actually carried out by Mendel Leaf. Okay, the contribution to even to the current periodic table has been extensively done by Mendel Leaf. He has, he has actually conducted a lot of chemical experiments, a lot of chemical experiments, and has worked extensively in, uh, in you know, grouping together different elements. All right, so Mendel Leaf periodic table even when it was not perfect the work he has done was extremely extensive all right so mendeleev's periodic table the classification was based on two things okay classification or the arrangement in mendeleev's periodic table was based on two things one is the atomic mass one is the atomic mass what is the second thing the second thing is the chemical property is based on the chemical property, chemical property, all right. In order to identify the chemical property, what did he do? He went ahead and uh, checked the formula of oxides and hydrides, oxides and hydrides, which are formed by different elements, okay. So, what was the what was the basis of classification of the Mendeleev's periodic table? He had taken atomic mass as well as the physical and chemical property of the elements. Okay, so in order to test, in order to check the chemical property, what did he do? He went ahead and tested the formula. Went ahead and checked the formula of oxides and hydrides. What is meant by oxide? When an element, when an element reacts with oxygen. It forms oxygen. It forms oxides. It forms oxides. When an element reacts with hydrogen, it forms hydrides. It forms hydrides. All right? Hydrides. Okay. Now, why did he choose oxygen and hydrogen? First reason is that oxygen and hydrogen are uh, uh, very easily available. And moreover, oxygen and hydrogen are very reactive and combine with almost all the elements to form oxides and hydrides. So it was very easy for him to conduct all these experiments. Now he checked the formula of oxides and hydrides. Okay. Now what did Mendeleev do? Mendeleev went ahead and checked the formula of oxides and hydrides. And he formed that as a basis of classification of the periodic table. So when, when he was arranging the... Uh, when he was arranging the elements based on atomic mass, this is one mass, this has a higher mass, this has a higher mass. Whenever he encountered an element which has the same formula of oxide, which has the same formula, say this is Na2O. So the next one being say MgO, other one being something CO, uh, CO, something like that. All right. So then he, when he encounters, when he is going on arranging the elements based on atomic mass, suddenly he encounters KO. See, now this is having the same formula, K2O. This is form uh, having the same formula as that of sodium oxide. Now he places K2O under this, potassium oxide under this. That is, sodium is placed over here. Potassium is placed beneath it, okay, underneath it. Now, so what did he do? When he went ahead and arranged all the atoms based on increasing order of atomic mass, the moment he encounters that, see, this particular guy is having similar uh, oxide formula and hydride formula as another one. He goes ahead and places it underneath. That is what he had done, all right? So, according to Mendeleev, according to Mendeleev, Physical and chemical property of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic atomic mass. That is, when atomic mass increases at regular intervals, the physical and chemical properties are going to repeat. Okay, the physical and chemical properties are periodic functions of their atomic mass. So, in at regular intervals, the physical and chemical properties are going to repeat. That is the meaning of this particular statement. Okay, this is very important. Every law you should by heart, you should use the same words and sentences as used by the creator. Okay, now what is meant by periodicity of property? Periodicity means repetition of property at regular intervals. 
periodicity means repetition of property at regular intervals so uh, on what basis they did he do that also is very important he has done the arrangement based on atomic mass as well as chemical property for chemical property he used the formula of oxides and hydrides and this particular law is extremely important physical and chemical property of elements are periodic function of their atomic masses now we are moving on to the advantages and disadvantages before that mendeleev's periodic table had a few specialities during mendeleev's time we uh, we were aware of about 63 elements so what did he do he arranged all the 63 elements in a in increasing order so there were horizontal rows and vertical columns were there all right horizontal rows were there as well as horizontal rows and vertical columns were there all right whenever he found out that the oxides are having similar formula he used to arrange one by one in the column okay in the column so what what can we say in the column the groups the elements are going to have the same oxide formula and same hydride formula this group is going to have same oxide formula and same hydride formula um, so uh, there were periods and group in mendeleev's periodic table so the number of periods were seven there were seven periods and there were eight groups there were seven periods and one two three the columns were known as groups okay so there were seven periods and eight groups noble gases were not known at that time so it was not placed in the periodic table all right now the elements in the group they were having similar property with each other they were having similar property with each other and the best speciality the very good speciality about mendeleev is that he had left quite a few gaps inside the periodic table inside his periodic table you can find a lot of gaps and he boldly said that it is not a limitation see we are yet to discover some elements in future you are going to discover these elements and you are going to fill these gaps and he even predicted the property of the elements which were going to be discovered so he named them aka boron aka silicon and aka aluminum aka from sanskrit okay you have to by heart what is aka boron scandium aka silicon it is germanium aka aluminum it is silicon this is very important okay this is very important because these are very frequently asked questions okay one thing is that mendeleev has given a wrong order in one of the in one of the combinations he has created one particular set of elements were given a wrong increasing order so uh, uh, lower atomic mass was arranged after a higher atomic mass which we are going to see in a minute okay so now we are going to go ahead and look at the limitation no merits of mendeleev first okay so first merit is that he has actually left some vacant space and he told that you are going to discover some element in future uh, and he also named it aka boron aka aluminum and aka silicon okay and mendeleev's periodic table uh, he even predicted the property of undiscovered element based on the position of the mendeleev's periodic table he was able to you know predict the properties now when noble gases were discovered noble gases came in much later into the scenario why because noble gases as such they are non reactive okay and they are uh, uh, you know present in very trace amounts they are non reactive and they are present in trace amounts so no one will even be aware that such elements are present in the atmosphere right so when noble gases were uh, came in late into the scenario uh, people thought that mendeleev's periodic table will be dis dis uh, disturbed but nothing of that sort happened without disturbing even a single position mendel mendeleev's periodic table was able to accommodate all the noble gases very beautifully into the table so in his table no rearrangement needed to be made in order to accommodate the noble gases so these are the very important merits so first thing is that he has left uh, vacant spaces second thing is that he had he had even predicted the undiscovered undiscovered uh, predicted the property of undiscovered elements and third thing is that the noble gases when they were discovered later he, these things could be fit into the periodic table uh, without disturbing any other members of the periodic table 
Now coming to the limitation of Mendeleev's periodic table. What were the limitations? First and foremost, hydrogen ka bhar ka hal to bahut bura hai. Okay, so hydrogen has no fixed position. See, hydrogen has the twist that hydrogen behaves like the first gas. Uh, first one second. Hydrogen behaves like the first group has a similarity with the first group as well as to the seventeenth group. If you see hydrogen over here, all right. If you see hydrogen over here, I'll show the first one. See, hydrogen behaves like the first group as well as like the seventeenth group. If you see hydrogen, okay, consider sodium. Sodium can react with chlorine, okay, halides. This group is known as halides. Sodium reacts with halide, like halide. One of the examples of halide is chlorine. And it forms NaCl. Hydrogen also reacts with chlorine and forms HCl. So sodium, when it reacts with Cl, it forms sodium chloride. Hydrogen, when it reacts with chlorine, it forms HCl. So it is for it is now it is behaving very similar to the first group. But if you see chlorine or bromine, say for example, bromine is it. Bromine is a non-metal. See, bro bromine is from the seventeenth group. Or say chlorine. Chlorine is from the seventeenth group. Chlorine is a non-metal. Non-metal. Hydrogen is a non-metal. Hydrogen is a non-metal. How does chlorine exist in atmosphere? Chlorine exists as Cl two. Chlorine forms covalent bond with itself. Covalent bond with itself. Today morning only we studied about covalent bond, right? Hydrogen also. Forms covalent bond with itself and forms H two and forms H two. So hydrogen exists as H two and they are linked with covalent bond exactly like how halides are going to exist. So now they also have similarity. Hydrogen and halide are similar to each other. Hydrogen and the alkali metals are similar to each other. In Mendeleev's thought, they are not able to fix the position. For hydrogen, so hydrogen was kind of left out. He did not give a proper position for hydrogen. There was a lot of conflict as far as hydrogen's position was concerned. Okay, and the second thing was that see he had been arranging the atoms based on the atomic mass. Okay, hydrogen itself. So if you take the case of hydrogen, hydrogen exists as Deuterium, deuterium, deuterium is there. All right, and tritium is there. There are many three isotopes for hydrogen. Okay, there are multiple isotopes for hydrogen. Even for chlorine, there is an isotope with mass thirty-five. Another with mass thirty-seven is there. All right. So even for chlorine, it has multiple isotopes. So when you are arranging for chlorine. Thirty-five should come. Thirty-five chlorine should come over here, and after some time, thirty-seven chlorine should come over here, right? Because you are arranging based on the mass, so they should be given separate position. No? But then, no separate position was given for the isotopes. Then isotopes started revolting against the uh, Mendeleev's periodic table. So that thing happened. So no fixed position was given for hydrogen because hydrogen was behaving. Uh, like both alkali metals as well as like halogens. Okay. Now the second thing is that there were no separate positions given for the isotopes. And third thing is that see he told that I am going to make my arrangement based on atomic mass and I am going to arrange in an ascending way of atomic mass. But the issue is that for one of the thing who was who were those to whom the injustice was done again cobalt and nickel, nickel and cobalt. Okay, there was no regular tech range. Cobalt was arranged before nickel. Cobalt had an atomic mass of fifty-eight point nine, whereas nickel had an atomic mass of fifty-eight point seven. He arranged it in order to make some adjustment because of the chemical property and other things. So this was another limitation as far as Mendeleev's periodic table was concerned. This is an extremely important question. Something related to Mendeleev's periodic table is going to be asked. Okay, so this is the Mendeleev's periodic table. Can you take two minutes to actually revise what has been taught till now? 
now coming to the last one which is the modern periodic table all right so all the other three atoms were based on based on atomic mass what did this guy henry mostly do okay he 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 told that he told one of the most important thing which is atomic number of an element is more fundamental property than atomic mass atomic number means the number of protons which is present in the nucleus okay atomic number is the number of protons which are present in the nucleus now it is not just the number of protons in a neutral atom in a neutral atom and not an ion not an ion okay in a neutral atom the number of proton is going to be equal to the number of electrons okay and the number of electrons or the outermost electrons are the people who are going to decide the chemical property okay so i am not going into depths of this in any case number of proton is equal to the number of electron and number of electron decides the electronic configuration based on the electronic configuration valency is going to be affected and valency is the one which decides the chemical property okay in short what can we say like henry mostly we can also say that guys atomic number is more fundamental property than the atomic mass than the atomic mass so he arranged everything all the elements known based on the atomic number he arranged all the elements known according to the atomic in increasing order of atomic number so what is modern periodic clock this is also a very important question what did mendeleev say he told that mendeleev told that physical and chemical property of element are periodic function of atomic mass what did modern periodic what does modern periodic law say physical and chemical properties ladies and gentlemen are periodic function of atomic number so when the elements are arranged based on increasing order of atomic number say elements are arranged based on increasing order of atomic number then there is going to be periodicity periodicity of properties why there will be periodicity in electronic configuration how can we say that say sodium is there sodium is 11 okay electronic configuration uh, electronic configuration is going to be 2 8 1 okay to say lithium is there lithium electronic configuration is lithium atomic number is 3 that is 2 1 Okay, two comma one two eight one. The next guy is going to be potassium two eight eight one. See if you see there is periodicity in electronic configuration. Every person in the first group is going to have the outermost electrons as one, the valence electrons as one. Okay, this leads to when valence electrons are same. the chemical property is going to be this okay uh, going to be same are you guys clear with this are you guys clear with this when atomic number yes, incre increases atomic number uh, when uh, when we are going to arrange the elements in increasing order of atomic number there is going to be periodicity in electronic configuration if there is periodicity in electronic configuration valence electrons are going to be say valence number of electrons are going to be same which means valency is also going to be same valency we will we'll deal with all these terms valency also is going to be same which means chemical property will be same chemical property will be same that is how periodicity comes into play that is how there is periodicity of chemical properties so modern periodic table is very important it says that the physical and chemical properties are periodic function of their atomic number it is not atomic mass it is atomic number so according to modern so based on uh, modern periodic uh, you know based on the atomic number these people arrived at modern periodic table so modern periodic table is based on atomic number atomic number is going to be equal to the protons number of protons in the nucleus of an atom all right so in modern periodic table if you see there are 18 vertical columns okay there are 18 vertical columns and there are 18 vertical columns and seven horizontal rows which are there okay i'll just show you this all right so there are 18 18 vertical columns which are there if you see there are 18 groups okay 
two, three, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eighteen groups which are there, and there are seven rows which are there, and the rows are known as periods, and columns are known as groups. The rows are known as periods, and columns are known as groups. So every atom in the period, if you see, this is atomic number is one. The second atomic number is two, and third atomic number. This is in increasing order of atomic number. The arrangement is every element you skip one atomic number um, uh, is going to increase. Okay, starting from the second second period, starting from the second period. Okay, from this period, the first element is going to be that of alkali metal. Okay, in this period, second period, third period, fourth period, fifth period, sixth period, and seventh period, this is going to be that of start. It starts with alkali metal. The period starts with alkali metal and ends with a noble gas. Ends with a noble gas. Okay, the period starts with starting from the second period. Alkali metal starts a period and noble gas ends a period. All right. The first first column, first group is known as alkali metal. Alkali metal. Second group is known as alkaline earth metals. Alkaline earth metals. Last last period. Okay, last period is known as noble gas. Noble gas group. All right. So these are the important properties. And moreover, there are other things. Um, other things which we have to see. See, there are two rows which are there beneath the modern periodic table. They are lanthanides and actinides. They are lanthanides and actinides. All right. So they are part of the periodic table itself. All right. After lanthanum comes lanthanides. After actinum comes the actinides. If you see a lanthanum's atomic number is fifty-seven. If you if you see lanthanide starts from fifty-eight. And ends at seventy one. Right after lanthanum, it starts with seventy two. Seventy two. The atomic number is seventy two because the elements from fifty eight to seventy one is is part of the lanthanide series. Same is the case with the actinide series. Lanthanides and actinides are going to be present beneath the uh, beneath the modern periodic table. Okay, so this is the thing. Now coming to uh, These things we have discovered. So, on moving from left to right, on moving from left to right, what happens? The valence electron. What is meant by valence electron? The valence electrons means number of electrons in the outer motion. Okay, number of electrons in the outer motion is known as the valence electron. Okay, on moving from left to right. So, if you take lithium, so we are going to discuss this particular, uh, this particular period. Okay, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen. Okay, lithium atomic number is three. Electronic configuration is going to be two comma one. So the number of valence electron is going to be one. Okay, we are going to discuss the valence electron. Beryllium atomic number is four. So the electronic configuration is going to be two comma two. Outermost electron is two. Outermost valence electron is two. Boron atomic number is five. Boron atomic number is five. The electronic configuration is two comma three. Valence electron is three. Carbon the valence electron is four. So as you go, as you go across the period, across the period, valence electrons are going to increase. Valence electrons are going to increase, but the number of shells. If you see, this is two comma two. This is two comma three. Next person is going to be two comma four. Next person is going to be two comma five. See, this is the first shell and this is the second shell. Did it affect the number of shell? As we go across the period, the number of shell remains same. The number of shell remains same. But the valence electron increases as we move across the period. But down the group, what happens? Lithium, lithium. If you see, it is two comma one. So down the group, we are going to discuss now lithium, sodium, potassium. So lithium electronic configuration is two comma one. This is three. This is eleven. This is two eight one. 
potassium if you see it is 2881 all right number of shell see this is k shell this is l shell this is k l f this is k l m n the number of shell is increasing down the group but the valence electron remains same down the group valence electron remains same down the group the number of shell increases down the group we have to clearly understand this concept in order to learn the trends in the periodic table are you guys clear with this yeah yes teacher yes ma'am okay so in long form of periodic table the elements are arranged in increasing order of their atomic masses we already saw that the number of horizontal rows horizontal rows are known as periods horizontal rows are known as periods there are seven periods and there are 18 groups which are the vertical columns vertical columns which are there all right so this is how the periodic table is going to look like so this is the group this is the group and these are the columns. the and so these are the periods which are there all right okay so there are 18 groups and seven periods and the arrangement you can say is based on the electronic configuration okay now now period uh, if you see the uh, periods we are going to define uh, i mean uh, see the characteristic of the periods so the number of elements in each period is going to be fixed the first period for it, it is uh, the number of elements in each period is determined by the shell is determined by the shell okay first period is related to k shell second period is related to l shell and third period related to m shell and so on okay the first period k shell can accommodate only two electrons so the first period which is which is composed of hydrogen and helium so in first period there are only two elements because the k shell can accommodate only two electrons two electrons l shell can have eight electrons l shell can have eight electrons so if you see the second period which is made up of lithium beryllium boron carbon hydrogen oxygen fluorine neon there are eight eight elements there are eight elements in the second period all right now coming to the m shell which is the third shell okay we are discussing about the sodium one it can actually accommodate 18 electrons but the issue is that m being the outermost shell there is another rule if a shell is the outermost shell it can accommodate only 8 electrons if the shell is an outermost shell so if you see sodium make the sodium it can accommodate only uh, sodium will have till m even when even when this m has a capability of uh, you know accommodating 18 electron if m is in the outermost state say say n comes after this then this has the permission to go through till 18 but if this is the outermost shell if this is the outermost shell if n is not there then only 8 can be 8 electrons are permitted in the m shell so that is why that is why the third third period has only eight electron has sorry only eight element are you guys clear with this so the first period is related to k and it has only two elements second period is related to l it can accommodate eight elements okay third shell even when it can it is related to m it can accommodate 18 electrons it being the outermost shell only eight elements are supported only eight elements are supported fourth and fifth will have 18 elements each and sixth shell is going to have 32 elements which is the longest shell okay from second period onwards from second period onwards lithium it starts with an alkali metal and ends with a noble gas and ends with a noble gas the first element has one all this group has one valence electron this group has two valence electron 13th group has three valence electron this has fourth valence four valence electron etc etc and the noble gas is going to have eight valence electron noble gas is going to have eight valence electrons uh, okay and these two first group okay we will we'll come to that when we are studying group okay so the next concept is the groups so 
there are 18 groups which are there. There are 18 groups which are there. The vertical columns are known as the group. So, the, in the group, if you see, in the group, the atomic number need not be consecutive. See, lithium is 3, atomic number is 3. Sodium, after that, it came as 11. Potassium came as 90. So, in the group, they may not have consecutive atomic numbers. And the most important speciality of a group is that within a group, it, the elements are going to have similar property as the valence electron, number of the valence electron is same. So, the valency is going to be same. See, if you see the first group, second group and 13th to 18th group, 13th to 18th group, okay. Just uh, share this, 13th to 18th group, okay. One second. Okay, now if you see, now if you see, all right. So, first group, second group and 13th to 18th group are known as representative elements. They are known as the representative groups, okay. Because their group number can be found out using the valence electrons. We are going to see that in a bit, uh, in, uh, just in a moment. And, but then the number, that is uh, the elements from 3rd to 12th group these things, 3rd to 12th group, are known as transition elements. These are known as transition elements. First group, second group, and 13th to 18th group are known as uh, representative groups. The, in between them, we have the transition elements. 58, 58 to 71, we call them as lanthanide series. 89, that is 90 to 103. We call them as actinide series. Lanthanide series and actinide series are present beneath the actual periodic table. Okay. And the elements within the modern periodic table are divided into metals, non-metals and metalloids. Metalloids. Okay. So, metals. We can see metals till here. Okay. Till this particular place, we can see metals. All these are metals. The me uh, In between metals and non-metals, we have metalloids. Examples of non-metal uh, metalloids are boron. See, boron is there. Silicon is there. Um, you know, germanium is there. All these things are examples of metalloids. Okay. So, on the left side, left side of the periodic table is generally occupied by metals. And the right side, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, phosphorus, all these things, all these things are non-metals. Even when the number of non-metals are extremely less, non-metals are very, very important for living organism because of Mr. Carbon and Mr. Hydrogen and Mr. Oxygen and Mr. Nitrogen. Or oh, because of these things, non-metals are extremely important for living organisms. In any case, metals you can find it on the left hand side, and non metals you can find it on the right hand side of the modern periodic table. Okay, now coming to the next one the issues. How did modern periodic table take care of the issues of Mendeleev's periodic table? The position of hydrogen. Hydrogen got placed at, uh, on top of group one. But if you see, if we are discussing about alkali metals, we'll never consider hydrogen. Hydrogen is not an alkali metal. It was just given a position on top of the alkali metal. That is it. Okay. Uh, since both of them have valence electrons as one. So since atomic modern periodic table is based on the valence electrons, we thought like, okay, we are going to have the same valence electron for hydrogen and sodium. Let us place it in the same group. But whenever alkali metal is discussed, we are not going to discuss about hydrogen. Hydrogen is never included. And this particular issue, that isotope need to be included, that never comes up. Why? Because, why? Because chlorine, if you see chlorine or hydrogen for that matter, hydrogen can only have an atomic number of one. Hydrogen can only have an atomic number of one. Even if it is, we are talking about deuterium, even if we are talking about tritium, the hydrogen, any hydrogen, if you take, if it is hydrogen, the atomic number is going to be 1. 
If it is chlorine, the atomic number is going to be seventy. No matter what the mass is, if we are talking about chlorine, atomic number cannot change. So every isotope of chlorine is going to occupy this position alone. Every isotope of hydrogen is going to occupy the top position alone. Okay. Now position of cobalt and nickel that got adjusted. Why? Because cobalt, if you see, the atomic number is twenty-seven, and nickel, if you see, the atomic number is twenty. They were arranged very properly, and the wrong order got rectified in this particular case. All right. So this is regarding the modern periodic table. Okay. The merits of modern periodic table. So if you see the merit of modern periodic table, modern periodic table was the first thing which actually said that atomic number is more important by and by and all. Okay, atomic number is the fundamental property of the element. Modern periodic table now uh, has uh, you know made us capable of understanding why these, this particular group is showing similar property. So that is because the similar property is shown because the electronic configuration is same, valence electrons are same, so the valency is the same. That is why these people are so showing similar property. Okay, this explains the reason. This gives us a reason for the periodicity. Okay, and modern periodic table has made the chemistry study more systematic. It is easier to remove, remember, remember the uh, uh, remember the property of the element based on the based on its position. So whenever we study, um, you know, property of elements, eleven, ten, twelve, what we do is. We study about the p. Uh, uh, we actually study based on the subshell configuration. In any case, we study the first group together, second group together, thirteenth group together. We study like that. So we study the property based on the group, not based on the elements, individual elements. Okay. And one more important thing is that in case we know the in case we know the uh, position of an element in the periodic table. Okay, then we can easily predict, easily predict the type of the compound it forms. Say, for example, a first group element is there. First group element is there. That is, it is placed in sodium family. Okay, so in the in the same family as that of sodium. And another group, which is halide group, is there. Say, chlorine is there. What is the type of compound they are going to form? This is a metal, and this is a non-metal. Okay. Generally, they are going to form ionic bond. They are going to form ionic bond, and they will be having a formula of X Y like NaCl. Okay, what did we understand? We just so we just told that X belongs to the first group and Y belongs to the seventeenth group. If we are able to just tell the position of the elements at the periodic table, we can understand the compound formed by it. The bond formed by it properties in many cases the type of the compound or the properties of the compound can also be predicted. This is what the uh, you know the modern periodic table has made us capable of. Okay, now and uh, okay, can you guys take five minutes to revise or now two minutes to revise what has been taught till now? Okay, say for example, one question is asked. Okay, an element belongs to X belongs to third group, third group, or say rather we'll give it a second group. All right, and another element belongs to seventeen group. What is the formula of the compound? Which is uh, say they have reacted together and forms a compound. What is its formula? How do you do that? How do you do that? Try it out. The second group is going to have a valency of two. Second group is going to have a valency of two. Seventeenth group is going to have a valency of one. Seventeenth group is going to have a valency of one. Okay, why? Because eighteenth group has a valency of zero. This has attained the subshell. Uh, you know, shell uh, eight electrons in the outermost shell. So seventeenth group requires one more electron. Right, in order to complete it, so the uh, the formula is going to be like x two y one. Now, if you cross cross, you are going to get x one y two. And when it comes to one, chemistry people are very angry with one, and we never write one. We never write one. So one is never written. The formula is going to be x y two. 
such questions are definitely going to come okay now finding out the period period number and group number when the using electronic configuration all right say uh, say for example a group number of 7 uh, is given what is the period what x uh, a particular element is there what is the group number and the period number of this particular element first and foremost you have to write the electronic configuration what are you supposed to write you are supposed to write the electronic configuration which is 2 comma 5 okay i'll start with another example which is 5 all right say the uh, atomic number is going to be 11 okay first you have to write the electronic configuration electronic configuration is going to be 281 okay another compound also i am going to write is it is it is say it is 12 electronic configuration is going to be 282 all right in order to write the period in order to find the period just count the number of shell how many shells are there 1 2 3 all right so the period is going to be 3 in this case period is going to be 1 2 3 3 in this case period is going to be just 2 in this case all right so now what about the group number you have to look at the valence electron valence electron if it is 1 or 2 the group number is going to be the respective number so the group number in this case is 1 group number in this case is 2 itself but if it is 3 4 5 up to 8 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 if it is any of these number you have to add a 10 to that particular number 10 to this valence electron 10 to this valence electron so the group number is going to be 10 plus valence electron so in this case the group number is going to be 15 say for example try this out say for example another element is there Uh, which is uh, which is having an atomic number of 30 which is having an atomic number of 30 find it out it belongs to which which uh, uh, group 13 it belongs to it belongs to 30 how did you come to that conclusion first you have to write the uh, electronic configuration period is going to be the uh, same as that of the number of shells which is going to be 3 group number is going to be 10 plus the valence electron which is 10 plus 3 which is 13 okay this is the answer this is very important question okay, something is going to come on this okay now uh, can you take a moment to revise that and after that we'll see trends in modern periodic table after that we are done okay now we are going to see trends in modern periodic table which is the last topic uh, of this particular chapter there are multiple characteristics which we are going to study first thing which we are going to discuss is the valency second thing atomic mass metallic property non metallic property and electronegativity okay first and foremost the difference between valence electron and valency is that valence electrons deals with the number of electrons in the outermost shell whatever number is there in the out number of electrons are present in the outermost shell is known as the valence electron what is meant by valency valency is actually determined with the help of valence electron but valency and valence electrons are not same valency is the combining capacity of an element how many electrons does the element does the element gain or lose or share in order to attain the inner gas configuration which is eight electrons in the outermost shell okay how many uh, how many electrons does an atom gain or lose or uh, lose or share in order to get the inert gas configuration that is known as valency valency is the combining capacity of an element valency determines the chemical reactivity of an element okay so if you see valency what is going to happen lithium say lithium across a period lithium atomic number is 3 beryllium atomic number is 4 boron 
boron atomic number is 5 carbon atomic number is 6 if you write if you write the configuration it is 2,1 2,2 2,3 2,4 next is 2,5 2,6 this is what is going to happen in a period see the valence electron is going to go on increasing this has a valence electron of 1 2 3 4 5 Six, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Now, what about valency? What about valency? If you see, this can lose an electron. This loses an electron to attain the sannyasa stage, which is noble gas configuration. So the valency is going to be one. What does this atom do? Beryllium finds it easy. It finds it finds it easy to lose two electron. So the valency is going to be two. Boron finds it easy to lose three electron. Carbon shares four electron today morning only we studied no carbon shares four electron. What about nitrogen? Nitrogen is going to gain three electron. Gain three electron. This one is going to gain three electron. So valency is going to be three. Valency is going to be three. Oxygen is going to gain two electron. Valency again is going to be two. The next one, which is chlorine, gains or fluorine. Fluorine is going to gain one electron, and the last one, being the noble gas, is going to not going to gain anything or lose anything. So the valency is going to be zero. So the valency first increases and then decreases down to zero. All right. Now what will happen down the group? Valency is going to be same. Lithium, sodium, potassium. Okay. Valency is going to be same down the group. Hello. It's fun, isn't it? Okay, Valency, can you move mute? Somebody is, uh, somebody has unmuted. All right. So Valency is going to remain same down the group. All right. So we are done with Valency. What about the atomic size? Atomic size. Atomic size. Uh, you did a mo. All right. So coming again, what about the atomic size? Atomic size refers to the radius of the atom from the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell. This is the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell. This is known as the atomic size. All right, distance between the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell of an isolated atom. This has to be an isolated atom. We cannot talk about the. We cannot talk about the compound. All right. We cannot talk about a compound atom in, inside a compound. All right. So what happens in the period? So there are two factors which are going to uh, influence that. One is the nuclear charge, and second is the number of shells. So atomic size is going to be influenced by the nuclear charge. Nuclear charge, and the second uh, second thing which is going to influence the size is the shell. Okay, number of shell, shell number. All right. So what happens is that when we go across a period, when we go across a period, what is going to happen? I'll just show the periodic table. All right. So when we go across a period, okay. All right. When we when we go across a period, see the shell is going to remain same. All right. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon. Everyone is going to have just one shell around them. Okay, but the nuclear charge is going to go increasing. So in a period, what happens? In a period, shell number is same. Shell number is same, but nuclear charge increases. Nuclear charge increases, which means increases. Which means the atom is going to. Now the nucleus is going to strongly attract the outermost electron. Strongly attract the outermost electron, and the size of the electron is slowly going to uh, atom is slowly going to decrease across a period because the shell number is same and the nuclear charge is increasing. That means the nucleus is strongly attracting the outermost shell. So what happens across a period? Across a period, the atomic size decreases. Now, what is going to happen down the group? Are you guys clear with the period concept? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Hello. 
Yes, sir. All right. Now, what is going to happen down the group? Now, down the group, if you see, all right, uh, the shell number is going to increase increase so here for lithium only one shell is there so for sodium okay hydrogen only one shell is there lithium two shell sodium will have three shell k will have four shell so the shell number is going to increase okay shell number is going to increase and what about the nuclear charge nuclear charge is also going to increase when shell number increases here it has only one shell okay now this has one shell and another shell on top of it the third one is going to have one shell two shell three shell okay now the size is going to go on increasing the shell number increasing means size increases all right but nuclear charge increases means the nucleus is going to pull the outermost shell size is going to decrease now there is a tug of war between these two of which this takes precedence increasing shell takes precedence over the nuclear charge that means size is going to increase down the group as the size is size of the atom is going to grow down the group are you guys clear with this concept all right now coming to so we are done with atomic size we are done with the valency now what about the metallic character metallic character means the tendency of a metal to lose its electron lose its electron the electrons are lost from the outermost electrons are always lost from the outermost say the nucleus is strongly attracting that electron will it be easy for that electron to be lost no that somebody is taking care of that guy somebody is actually pulling that guy no so if the if the nucleus which is there at the center is actually strongly pulling the outermost electrons he pulling means it will be difficult to lose the electron all right so this is a concept then the metallic character is going to be less metallic character means the the tendency of an element to lose electron okay so now coming to across the period across the period what happens ladies we are discussing about the metallic character all right metallic character across the period what happens nuclear charge increases right nuclear charge increases so the attraction attraction of nucleus attraction of nucleus to to valence electron valence electron increases right so it will be difficult to lose electron this in turn maps to difficult to lose electron lose electron so metallic character decreases this so across the period hello are you guys able to hear me yes sir hello hello yes ma'am yes can you hear me hello ma'am are you guys able to hear me Yes, ma'am. Okay, to Nanda. Or let's just move on. Across the period, across the period, metallic property decrease. Is another thing, unclear. Again, I am wondering that. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So down the group, in the same way, down the group, what happens? Down the group, size increases. Down the group, what happens? Size increases. Alla. When size of the now more and more shells are added, nuclear attraction to the outermost electron. attraction to outer electron outer electron decreases so metallic character it is easy to lose electron easy to lose electron right lose electron so what happens metallic character metallic character increases down the group metallic character is going to increase down the group are you guys clear with this concept yes 
Yes, ma'am. All right. Now coming to non-metallic character. Now, what about the non-metallic character? So we are done with the atomic size. We are done with the metallic character. Now, what about the uh, non-metallic character? It is a tendency to lose uh, to gain electron. It is just the opposite as that of the metallic character. In as far as metallic character is concerned, we are dealing with the tendency of an atom to gain the electron. As uh, sorry. Metallic character means a tendency to lose electron. Non-metallic character means tendency to gain electron. So we'll see what is going to happen. See across a period, what happened? What happened? Nuclear charge increases. Nuclear charge. This is across a period. Nuclear charge increases. All right. Okay. Nuclear charge increases. So attraction to the outer moves. Attraction to Outer shell increases. Outer shell increases, right? Shell increases. So the gaining. So if an electron is gained, that is also going to be attracted, attracted by the nucleus. Am I right or wrong? Right. So now what is going to happen across a period? If you see, this is across a period. See this particular guy. This particular shell has a law. He's being really attracted by the nucleus. Even if another electron comes, okay, that is going to be attracted very strongly. That means for this particular guy, if another electron comes, that is not going to be attracted because the size is already very huge. Okay, so the non-metallic property is going to decrease across a period. Decrease across a period. All right. So, what about the non-metallic property down the group? What is going to happen down the group? Down the group, if you see, size increases. Size increases. So, attraction to the outer shell. Attraction to outer shell. What is it going to happen? Outer shell decreases. Attraction to outer shell decreases. So, even if another one is gained, it is not going to be attracted very well. Even if another atom is going to be, another electron is gained, it is not going to be attracted because attraction to the outer shell is already less down the group. So non-metallic property decreases down the group. Okay, can you take a moment to revise this? Now, if you see chemical reactivity, okay, chemical reactivity of metals and non-metals, we have to study it separately. So, if you see non-metals, okay, the chemical reactivity is going to increase down the group. Chemical reactivity is going to increase down the group because size increases. Size increases, which means the what makes metals metals? The tendency to lose electrons. As size increases, it can easily lose electron. This guy can easily lose electron. So metallic character, metallic property is going to increase down the group. All right, down the group. What about non-metallic property? Attracting the electrons which are attracted. We is it, it, it's not well attracted in this particular case because the size is very huge, no. So that means the non-metallic property. So chemical reactivity of the non-metal decreases down the group. What makes non-metals non-metals? The tendency to gain electron. Already he is so big, right? He will not have a tendency to gain electrons. But this guy is comparatively small. This has a better tendency to gain electron. Okay, that means down the group, metallic property increases and non-metallic property, non-metallic property decreases. All right. This is also very important one. Now coming to electronegativity. Electronegativity is say there are two elements. Okay, say there are two elements who are there. Element one and element two. They decided to share a pair of electrons. See this guy. Say for example, this guy has a heavier attraction. 
take your attractive power then what happens is that there will be a tendency of this particular electron the shared pair of electron to move towards e2 move towards e2 this because this is a stronger guy he has a stronger attractive power okay the tendency of the element to attract the shared pair of electron towards itself in a covalent bond covalent bond is supposed to be just sharing okay between ben mutually benefit and mutually beneficial way but one guy is he is stronger then that guy will slowly pull the shared pair of electron to itself that tendency is known as electronegativity obviously when the nuclear charge increases its electronegativity is going to increase this guy will have a stronger nuclear charge nuclear charge increases electronegativity increases okay nuclear charge is going to increase across a period across a period nuclear charge increases no so electronegativity is also going to increase across a period down the group elect uh, uh, nuclear charge is going to decrease effective nuclear charge okay effective nuclear charge is going to decrease down the group down the group all right so then what happens electronegativity also decreases down the group all right now coming to the last topic i guess nature of oxide see metal oxide sodium oxide magnesium oxide calcium oxide all these are basic in nature whereas non metal oxides sulfur trioxide phosphorus oxide they are acidic in nature carbon dioxide all right carbon uh, sulfur trioxide forms sulfuric acid phosphorus oxide forms phosphoric acid these are acidic in nature all right these are this thing also you have to understand and study you see valent uh, is trends in modern periodic table kindly do not by heart you have to understand the concept properly because only application questions are going to be asked from this particular portion so it is extremely important that you understand these concepts and by heart it i have recorded the session so if you have any doubt kindly go through that aspect okay i think we are done with the chapter so you don't have to learn about ionization energy atomic radius increases down the group atomic radius decreases decreases across a period okay and metallic character is going to increase down the group non metallic character is going to increase across a period okay this is this is the meaning of this particular arrow all right so uh, go through the video again in case you have any doubt and try out a lot of questions